Here's the thing that I don't get still is Meadows, <laughs> okay? Let's just talk about Meadows for a second because the, 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 the picture of Meadows is very consistent throughout. And it's been in some ways consistent throughout the hearings. There's, there's roughly some camps you know about. There's the pro crew people. We know that's Giuliani. We know that's Peter Navarro. We know that's, you know, Bannon, all this folks, right? So we know who the pro uh, R is Peter Navarro's R, yeah. representative yeah. on set. <laughs> Peter Navarro. <laughs> Frequent yeah. host. Yeah, your client. Uh, no, <laughs> we, you know, we know who the pro coup people are. We know who the anti coup people are, right? So there's, you know, Cipollone and, and the White House Counsel's Office and the folks at DOJ, right? Then we know there's these kind of like, I don't want to have anything to do with it, cowards, yeah. right? Which yeah. is kind of what Ivanka and Jared look like. It's a few of the campaign lawyers. They're neither like, they're not, they're kind of sort of fence setters, but what they do know is, this is dangerous and probably criminally bad for a purely CYA reason. I'm not right. going to touch it. If it works, I don't want it to right. look like I was against it exactly. I want to benefit from okay. it. But if it doesn't work, I don't yeah. want to go to jail. But here's the thing. Meadows is the only one not in any of those three categories as established yet. It's just unclear where he is at. Like, I think he's pro coup, but yeah. he is clearly the way station for all these different voices. Yep. He doesn't seem to be articulating the basic kind of self preservation instinct that many other people are like, Cipollone is like, you can't do this. He's just this like bizarre cipher. And I just don't. But we well, got it's more. Clear, we, sorry, sorry, go ahead. Than it's ever been. And it was delivered with stunning clarity in one of the last lines of the hearing, which is. Yeah. Mark Meadows knows what he knows. He knows when he knew it. He knows what he did, and he wanted a pardon. Yeah. Yeah. Now you right. just you That's just right, right back right. from That's that, right. and this That's becomes this becomes for me yeah. uh, the hearing about Mark Meadows. Yes. And it seems to me that what the committee's ambition was today was to deliver a very high speed direct message to the Justice Department about Mark Meadows. Their first point of irritation with the Justice Department was, we sent you a criminal referral on him for defying our subpoena, yeah. and you did nothing, and you did nothing, and then you did more nothing for months and months and months. Now they really have yeah. the goods on Mark Meadows in this testimony, and once they knew they could deliver it in this effective package, which required some discussion and negotiation with the witness and the witness's new attorney, yeah. who's not on the Trump team, uh, they decided, we're going to go out there, we're going to deliver this to Day at very high speed directly to the Justice Department about the person who the Justice Department so far is protecting from that subpoena, possibly theoretically on the notion that there's some version of privilege that maybe we should honor here. But there is, of course, no such thing as any form of privilege when what you're protecting is discussions of a crime and you have that scene that godfather scene where this person who's very close to Mark Meadows, and we have extra uh, comment from people today who knew this, that she was in every single high-level yep. yeah, meeting everyone. that he was in on the Hill. Very unusual. There comes a moment in this drama where she goes over to tell him something important, and he closes the door of the car. Mm -hmm. She's very surprised. That's never happened before. He closes the door of the car because she can't hear what he's talking yep. about on the phone. She does it again a little while later, thinking that's one rare moment where yep. the door gets closed on me for the first time in history. He closes the door again. Well, so, and, and just to, 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 to finish the loop on this, I mean, I think the dark matter that this all orbited around, the implication is that there is an off the book coup that's being sprouted out of the Willard Hotel with the people that we know, right? The Roger Stones and the Steve Bannons, that basically Meadows is read into and is the only, essentially the only staffer who is read into that, right? The implication of all well, we of this... We don't, they don't yeah. tell us that today. Right. They've created the possibility yes. that that is right. true. Right, but the, the implication yes. is he knows more than he's willing to say, that he's having these conversations that he, she can't be a part of, that he's reacting while everyone else reacts with surprise and alarm and bewilderment he's that things are going crazy. He's, yeah. he's not, not reacting, reacting he's like, out of his like, body. That's yeah. the whole theme of the day. And we are getting, and you could sort of narrow it down even further from that, right? We get a lot of testimony today, and it's disconnected from everything else, about the fact that Mark Meadows wanted to go in person to the Willard Hotel <laughs> to go participate in these war room discussions on January 5th, the night before January 6th, and that Ms. Hutchinson thought that, who's a loyalist and works for him and does everything with him, thought that was a bad idea, and eventually at the very last second, he decides he's not going to do it, but he does phone in. Yeah. 
We don't, we don't really get an explanation for why that's yeah. relevant. In terms of the phone call that you're talking about, this is where Cassidy Hutchinson, according to these very interesting call logs or text logs that we get, where we learn that National Security Council staff knew that the Capitol mm -hmm. Police were overwhelmed, yep. knew that the breaches had happened, and knew about it in real time. That itself was a revelation. She is going to tell Mark Meadows the U.S. Capitol Police are having trouble stacking bodies. They cannot get enough personnel in front of this mob, and they are in trouble there. This is an urgent thing to deliver, that's when he doesn't take her call. The only person we know that Meadows was not talking to on the phone there is Donald Trump, because Donald Trump was at that moment still giving his speech. Because when he closes the door on Cassidy Hutchinson for the second time, it's all he says is, yeah. how much time is left in his speech? So we know that that's not who he's talking to in that moment. At least that's how I discern yep. the, yeah. the, the timeline yeah. and the yeah. testimony yeah. today. So who else was he talking to that was more important than mm. learning in the first instance in real time while he's getting in a car that's about to move that the Capitol is being violently overrun? Who was more important to continue talking to in that moment? I think that's what they're connecting, yeah. is, is who are those operational people? The fact that some people who should have known better were still actually concerned by how bad it was does read credibly. But yes. you cannot throw yourself a surprise party. Yes. If you know, <laughs> yes. if you know what you're doing, <laughs> then Mark Meadows, Donald Trump, and a, a few others, according to the That's evidence, right. did not seem surprised because this was right. either the direct plan or the thing that they saw as a distinct eventuality right. and possibility.